Hi everyone, welcome to my channel, Heavenly Backyard Astronomy. And you know, I've been just like everybody else, wanting the clouds to get out of the way. We've been seeing lots of clouds again for the last several, well, weeks it seems like, as they were passing on through. But you know, there have been a couple of nights where I was able to open up the telescope and get a, 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 a peek at the sky, I guess you can call it that. And it wasn't the best of seeing, but it was decent seeing. And uh, I was able to concentrate on a new target that I was looking at. And it's kind of like medium high in the, south, in the southern sky around this latitude. I'm at 32 degrees north latitude here. This is Thor's helmet uh, that I've been trying to get. And I've seen other pictures of it, and I wanted to get a decent picture as well. And I wanted to get more of just a, 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 a one-shot color camera image or a broadband image. I also wanted to get a narrow band image of the nebula so I can get more of the blues and the reds, uh, particularly the blues of uh, the oxygen three, which is very sensitive to the blues. So that's what I was trying to get. And well, let's take a look at some of the processing. So let's take a look at uh, Stellarium and see exactly where in the sky that we can find Thor's helmet. And there it is uh, in the southern sky, uh, medium high during the late hours uh, around uh, before midnight and then shortly thereafter midnight. So it, it's a good time to photograph it because the, it is high overhead right around midnight. Uh, just to the left of the bright star Sirius and there is the Orion constellation over here. This is Procyon over here in Canis Minor, or the lesser dog, and this is Sirius, of course, the bright star, Canis Major, or the greater dog, and Thor's helmet is right over here. So let's zoom in on that. So zooming in, uh, we can see that the helmet right there is uh, uh, showing, um, and my objective was to to get this with more of the blue than the green light. I, I, was, I, was, I was after that uh, emission portion of the nebula right here. And uh, this nebula is about uh, somewhere in the ballpark, just shy of 12,000 light years from Earth. And uh, most of this is emission, uh, which is the, the, the blue light, and the, the blue and the green light uh, is from uh, the stars over here, very strong, powerful, hot stars. Uh, radiating uh, through these uh, areas of uh, dust and what have you, which is causing the uh, emission of blue light. And then you got a little bit of reflection going on with the hydrogen atoms over here uh, giving off the red light. So uh, Thor's helmet, let's take a look and see how I can see it, or, and you can too with your telescope. And the telescope that I'm going to be using is the 130 millimeter uh, Orion Eon refractor telescope. It's a triplet and it does a very good job. Well, here's the setup in Nina uh, that I had for uh, Thor's helmet. Also, I had just uh, finished doing a peck curve through the um, EQ mod and I had it uh, going at sidereal rate plus the uh, PEC or periodic error correction uh, wave and there you can see it going through there making the corrections as I track. Now here's the uh, tracking from uh, PHD2 and this glare here believe it or not that is from the moon uh, casting uh, light into my uh, guide scope um, but I was able to guide with it. I had some decent guiding as well as you can see right here and uh, I, I was quite pleased with that total RMS error 0.47. You know, I, I really can't argue with that at all. But uh, th that's the setup I had in um, uh, Nina. And here you can see a, a closer view uh, of the um, first picture I received uh, from uh, or one of the first pictures I received from Nina. And the stars were quite round. I was very pleased. The tracking was, was spot on, I thought. And uh, uh, yeah, I got that warning over here. But yeah, I was very pleased with the, uh, the tracking. Uh, I did a, uh, a three-point polar alignment uh, from a Nina, and uh, that helped a lot as well with the tracking. I found out that it seems like if I do a, a three-point polar alignment on the target itself, uh, slew the telescope to the target, and then do a three-point polar alignment. It does a much better job than, say, trying to polar align on the, the North Star, for example. So here I did a three-point polar alignment, and uh, again, I was quite pleased with the uh, 
with the tracking overall. And the stars came out nice and round. Yeah, uh, no, 300 seconds. These were 300 seconds, and I was able to um, uh, track very well with that. Now, I did have the filter on there. I think I used the actual, the uh, L Optron filter here. And uh, in, in this particular example, I think I mentioned earlier, or, or will mention later, that I used the ultra high contrast. Now, this was the uh, L Optron L Extreme, no, the L Enhance filter that I used on this. And because of that, I pumped up the gain to 250 um, with the um, unity gain at 139. At unity gain at 139, I was hardly getting anything. So uh, I, I pumped it up to 250 and I came up with these images here and I was quite pleased with that. But again, five minute uh, exposures and you know, five minute exposures, look how round those stars are. So I'm very pleased with that. All right, let's take a look at some of the images. First of all, from the one-shot color camera, that was the ASI 071 MC uh, Pro, and I had it at minus 10 Celsius was the sensor temperature. And there you can see, it's a, it's a decent picture, a lot of stars in the background as well, but uh, there's a picture of the Thor's helmet right there. And I, I wanted to get more of this emission area of the nebulosity, which is, I, I think, more in the blue. It's showing up a little bit on the green side here. The filter I used was simply the uh, ultra high contrast filter, a Bayer uh, UHC uh, filter. And I wanted to get more of the blue area right in this region here, even though I was getting some uh, good uh, reflection nebula with the red over here and, and beyond. And beyond. Uh, but let's take a look at the um, narrowband camera. And uh, that was the ASI 1600. And this was the oxygen three in the four nanometer uh, range. And you can see a lot of uh, emission coming in from the oxygen, which is usually associated with the blue end of the spectrum. And a lot of blue is definitely showing up over here. Now, let's take a look at the um, hydrogen alpha, uh, which I used, and that's it right here. And again, it, it, it's showing quite a bit of uh, hydrogen as well. And I was rather impressed with that. I didn't think it was be, would be that much uh, in the, uh, uh, HA or basically the red area of the spectrum, but there it is right there. So what I did from that, I, I um, combined the two and this was the, uh, my RGB HA plus O3, O3 or HOO. And I used the O3 for luminance. And there you see, it, it's, it's quite a bit nice, uh, a little bit better than the uh, one shot color camera view. Uh, but I'm still seeing the green here. Now I could take some of that green out, but I had another idea. What would happen if I took the O3 and the HA and combined them together uh, half and half? Uh, I did that easily in uh, Pixel Sight through Pixel Math. Ended up with this image right here. This is the HA plus the O3, uh, half and half blended together uh, using Pixel Math. And uh, if you look at the um, O3, you can see that it's a lot of uh, O3 in there, but not quite as bright. And the, uh, um, the hydrogen uh, is a little bit dimmer. So the combination of the two uh, gives me this right here. So then I combine those together, the HA plus the O3 uh, was this image right here. So then I use that as my um, G in the RGB. I use this for the green area of the RGB image. And from that, I came up with this combination here, the HA plus the HA plus O3 plus O3. And uh, I used the oxygen three for the luminance. And there you see, it's much better. A nice blue area here. When you compare that with the um, uh, the, the, the other one, just the HOO, uh, there you have a lot of green there. Uh, but here, uh, without any color subtractions or what have you, uh, you get a much nicer Thor's helmet in this region here. And uh, I kind of like that quite a bit. Um, so from there, I wanted to combine these two images, uh, this one here plus uh, this one here. And uh, that's the one shot color camera image right there. And uh, let's take a look 
at the process of the combination of the two. Now, first of all, I had to star align them. So um, uh, this is the HA plus the combo plus the O3 in the narrow band, but I aligned it with the um, this one here so that they would be they would fit. And from that, I combined them to get this. And this was the combination of the two, the uh, one shot color image plus the narrow band image blended together. And there you can see, I got a little bit of both. I got more of that red area, but I kept the blue, but also some of the green is still showing through there. So this is a, a, a little bit nicer image, I think. And uh, you can see more of the nebulosity uh, around the, the um, Thor's helmet as well. And uh, Passing this through Photoshop came up with this. This was my final uh, view of the uh, picture um, through Photoshop. And there you can see a, quite a bit of the emission nebula coming out of this area here, uh, the actual helmet itself, I suppose. Uh, but uh, I'm, I'm rather pleased with this, uh, the final image after passing through Photoshop. Well, there you have it, Thor's Nebula. And it came out pretty good, I thought, considering that the sky wasn't perfectly clear at all during all of the sessions. I had three different nights I went out. Uh, one night was with the um, uh, broadband filters, and the other nights was with the narrowband filters. I did two nights of those and one night of the broadband. So putting them all together, I was rather pleased, considering, again, the sky conditions weren't perfect, and they're still not great. Another front is coming into the area, but I'm still working on my other project that I've been telling you about uh, in past videos, the M81 and M82 project, I'm calling it, um, Bode's Galaxy and the Cigar Galaxy, which I sometimes call the Exploding Cigar Galaxy. Well, I guess that's previews of coming attractions. But I wanted you know, to get more uh, uh, information and more uh, imagery of this uh, to show you what I wanted to talk about. Uh, uh, about these galaxies. They're rather fascinating galaxies at that. So that's coming up in the future, so stay tuned. But remember, you know, the heavens are just filled with majestic glories. You got the uh, Thor's helmet right here is one of the things that's colorful too, but uh, all in a sky near you. So unless you need rain, clear skies everyone. Well, as I mentioned, not only is the weather not perfect, but sometimes it's just doesn't work the way you want it to work and well let's take a look at some of those outtakes with the tracking overall and the stars came out nice and round so once again looking at the uh, well there's some guidance uh, issues going on at the moment I don't know what happened there a lot of corrections going on but uh, yeah this image no nope, not that image ah up there I got to get this off um, let's see here let me get this off here uh, okay, I'm back. And here I'm stu shooting, <clears throat> and here I'm shooting from Studio Two of the YouTube Three Two One. And here I'm shooting from Studio Two of the Heavenly Backyard Astronomy st Studio Three Two One. And here I'm shooting, no. and here I'm shooting from Studio Two of my YouTube channel. I'm, what is this thing? Is right there. This is Sirius, the great, uh, greater um, star, or the greater dog. In these, <laughs> and here is Sirius over here, or Canis Major, the the uh, greater. Uh, such. Let's try this again. <laughs>